welcome to my first ever Scepter focused Elementalist tutorial video. Uh, normally I do a lot of staff videos as you guys may be aware, um, but this time I'm going to try something a little bit different because I feel like I hit that one pretty hard on the head and there's not much more I can say about that. So uh, that being said, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you guys did uh, like and subscribe the video. It's the best way for me to know that I'm actually getting any traction on these at all if it's worth wasting my effort doing. So please like it, subscribe to it, and that would be great. So. I'm doing something different because I, I don't like running the meta builds. I, I feel like they're kind of boring and I feel like uh, that th there's something to be gained about having a, a set of skills that people don't really know how to react to. Speaking of skills, I, I also couldn't stand Dagger Dagger Elementalist because they don't have any protection from ranged. Uh, they, I, there's a, I think there's a lot more emphasis on range in SPVP now, especially with the new uh, rangers uh, being as strong as they are. So having the extra, the reflect from Magnetic Wave and Swirling Winds really helps in that regard. In fact, it makes rangers almost your target of opportunity. They're almost too easy to beat. So keeping in with tradition, the normal disclaimers. Uh, this is an advanced Elementalist tutorial video, so if you don't know your buttons, this probably isn't the tutorial for you. You need to know what they do, at least. Uh, I don't, the names aren't necessarily important, but there's that. I am not the best Elementalist, to, elementalist out there. Uh, I am in the top 1000 list, so you can look me up there. So without further ado, you, let's get on to the video. So I included this duel because I wanted to show you the importance of a stun breaker, but also the most basic combo, which really doesn't need a lot of explaining. So we're going to immobilize him with a Signet of Earth. We're going to start casting Dragon's Tooth and put down the Flame Wall before that goes off, and then Phoenix it all down. So that does the most amount of damage. That's our spike damage, and that's all power-based. Okay, so I'm going to show you another duel. It's not super competitive still, but it's going to take it to the next level here. We're going to use the first combo on him, but this time he Lightning Flash there, so... and. Uh, so he's going to still have one more combo breaker here, which is Armor of Earth, to get out of that one. So we're going to hit him with the next combo, which is the Ice one. We're going to lock him in place with Signet of Earth, and then we're going to drop Shatterstone, Comet, and Chill. And what this does isn't a great deal of damage, but it forces them to use anything else that they have left. Their dodge rolls, it forces them to use their Condi clear, and in this case it kills him. So most people are going to have a stun breaker and get are able to get out of the first combo. So here's what happens when you whiff. I cast my Gust and then he dodged it, so I used my Dragon's Tooth, but I knew I wasn't going to hit him, so I didn't waste my Phoenix. When he comes out of stealth, I'm going to drop my Flame Wall and then blast it with the Phoenix to do the damage I would have done if I got the combo off. Then I'm going to switch into Earth and I'm going to use the, uh, the Rock Shield to apply Burning uh, for the damage. And then I'm going to blast the field with my Magnetic Wave for more Might. So now I switched into water because I thought he was going to come at me and I was going to set him up for that next combo, the, uh, the the frost combo, but he didn't. So I applied burning again, and you'll see that I'm preparing to drop my next combo on him with the signet of earth. He's got nothing left, and if he didn't go down, I still have that full combo one ready to go. Okay, so here's all the combos put in optimal order so that we can go through them all in a single rotation. We're going to start off with a gust and go straight into the ice combo. While he's knocked down, we're going to hit him with a Signet of Earth, and we're going to go into the combo 1. This one's the one that we're used to and causes the most damage. Once we're done with that, because the Flame Wall's still up from combo 1, we're going to go straight into combo into the Burn combo, and we're going to just keep going. I targeted the second Golem because this first one wasn't going to last nearly long enough, so I just kept going with that. So I know you're thinking that this looks really complicated and that it's never going to work practically, but as you've seen, these are just three combos all put together into a nice convenient order, which makes it look really hard, but it's not. They are actually three completely separate combos that you can put in whatever order you want when you want them. For example, you're not always going to hit your gust. Like in this example, I'm going to try to hit him with a gust and I'm going to miss. My automatic reaction is to drop a dragon's tooth and because I missed the gust, that's going to miss. Instead of continuing along with my combo the way I was going, I still have my fire up and my phoenix up, so I'm going to roll right into a, a burning combo with the fire and the phoenix. This gives me a chance to deal damage and apply conditions, and it saves my other ice combo for later. I can use it whenever I want. I can use it if I think they're out of Condi clear, or if I think that I need to pull a, a stun breaker, and it really helps your game. Unlike Dagger Dagger, for example, where if you fall out of your rotation, you suffer for it in the long run. And because I know a whole bunch of you are going to leap at my throat to tell me I forgot a whole bunch of combos, here they are. You can click on them to view them. I'm just going to put them at the end of the video because I don't use them. Okay? OK, 
Okay, so an actual duel here. We're going to start out by using the ice combo to attempt to pull his son with his stun breakers. I'm going to hit him with the signet of earth. He's going to pull out of it immediately, so I don't waste the rest of my water abilities here. I'm going to go into fire and attempt to combo one, but I don't have any knockdown, so I just straight, go straight into earth combo. Then with my lightning backup, I'm going to be able to go right back into the Frost combo, the one that I saved from earlier. So I try to hit him with a Gust, but I missed, so I drop the Daze anyway, and then I go straight into a combo 1 with a Signet of Earth, and he's got nothing left. That ends the fight. So this next fight I'm going to deal with a Thief. I'm going to make a couple of mistakes, so keep an eye out for them. Uh, I tried to Gust him here, and then I missed. But instead of you going into the Earth combo, I wasted my Phoenix. So I, instead I went into a Frost combo. Going to immobilize him here, but he's going to use his breaker to get out. Now it's just a waiting game. I have to wait and try to get my combos back up, wait for my CC to come up so I can combo him down. And thieves usually have the luxury of having their utilities come up faster than most other people's, but with this build, all of my signets come up in less than 20 seconds, so that's uh, a huge boon. So, for example, the signet of Earth is coming up here. I'm going to hit him with a combo 1. He doesn't have his stun breaker up yet. Like, my combo came up before his stun breaker, which is his mistake. He keep th keeps thinking he can outlast me, which is just not the case. But I used all of my signets trying to get him down here, which was a mistake on my part. But again, he thinks his utilities are going to come up faster, so he just goes into hiding. Um, my signets are coming back up. Now, I made a big mistake here, which you're going to see. I'm going to start with a combo 1. Uh, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to waste that Phoenix on that combo one. I have a burning combo here. I can switch in, I could drop the flame wall and then use the uh, earth, but I don't. I don't drop the flame wall. I, I would say it's probably panic, but that was definitely one of the biggest mistakes I made of this duel and could have cost me. As you can see, I just wasted a lot of my water abilities without any CC, so I don't even know if they hit. I believe that it did, but uh, it could have could have gone worse. Um, and What's worse is it puts my puts me way out of rotation. Like you'll see here, I'm going to try to attempt a water combo, but I foolishly wasted it. So looking at it, I hit them with the Signet of Earth, switch into water, and all I have left is a Shatterstone. I didn't hit the Signet of Earth anyway, so it wasn't a big deal, but still frustrating. So this time I do remember to put down the Flame Wall. I'm going to try to get him into with a Burning Combo with Earth, but he's going to go right into a Shadow Refuge, which means I'm not going to be able to hit him with it. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to pull his Stun Breakers, because he's he's going through them faster than I am, so I'm going to hit him with a, a Signet of Earth, and then I'm going to daze him, and then he's going to use his last Stun Breaker to get out of it. Here it comes. There it goes. So he's out of that now. So now it's just a matter, again, a waiting game. But my combos come up way faster than his does. So what's coming up next is the combo one, but this time he doesn't have anything to get out. So I'm going to throw down a Shatterstone just to give him a red circle to think about. But you know that he's running out of clears because his health is getting really low and, his, and the Condies are starting to stick. So now I'm going to hit him with the Signet of Earth. I'm going to use my combo one, and this time he's screwed. And that's all there is to it. Just keep on your combos and keep hitting them with them until they run out of stun breakers and the combos start to stick. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking about the combos because I think you get it. Uh, instead, focus on the signets. Focus on when I'm using them. I'm using them because the protection on them doesn't last very long, so I need to be able to time when my opponent is going to come and hit me. In this case, I'm going to see this guy coming, so I use a fire signet, cast it, and then take the hit. Notice how I have protection up for that attack. I need to be able to anticipate that from my opponent in order to take the damage. If I'm not able to predict that, then I'm going to die. The uh, Signet of Restoration, the Signet of Earth, and the Signet of Fire all have to be cast ahead of time as well, so you need to be able to anticipate, not just react. The great ones for reaction are Signet of Air and the Fire Shield from Fire Attunement. Like, watch right here. I'm taking a lot of damage. I use Signet of Air to get the protection. It's like an instant, even though I wasn't stunned and it is a stun breaker, it was used to grant the protection I needed to stay alive for that attack. So I don't talk a lot about the other abilities either, but they really are good. Like, the Swirling Winds is a great way to mitigate damage while you're waiting for your Signets to come back up. Magnetic Wave as well is also really great for Condi Clear and Reflect, but I only talked about it in this tutorial as a, uh, a Blast Finisher because it's really the only part that matters for the combos, but it does have other purposes too. Okay, so let's take this out of the 1v1 arena and show you how it sort of works in a ranked game. I want you to focus mostly on the signets and how I'm using them for protection. Again, I'm not going to focus a lot on the combos here. You, you know enough about them, you can see them for yourself. This starts out as a 1v1, and then it's going to switch into a 2v2. Right now, I have him under control. 
all of my signets are up. I'm, I'm holding on to my CC, I'm saving my signets for good protection to block me from the hits, and then the second guy comes in and I suddenly lose all control. I have to start blasting away through my signets and start using my invuln just to try to stay up. Fortunately, I'm saved by the second guy to turn this into a 2v2, but I'm using the fiery greatsword here to get away. If I, the fight wasn't going in our favor, I could have just kept going, but in this case I'm going to turn around and just get back into the fight. So that takes us to the end of this section. We're going to go into the team fights now. Uh, this is probably where most people are critical of the build, so stick around. If you've enjoyed it this far, I promise you'll enjoy this part as well. So I'm going to reiterate this point because it's really important. The use of your signets are your lifeline. How effectively and how efficiently you use them are what's going to help you win fights. In this case, I'm going to get reamed by a secondary engineer here. He's going to basically lock me down and then drop his full DPS on me with the assistance of this ranger. I fortunately got that swirling winds up in time to block most of the attacks, but he still hits me with the volley. Now, the engineer's moved off because he figures I'm done, but I'm effective, and I mean very effective, at killing longbow rangers here. So I knock him down with a gust and I go into a combo one. He doesn't have anything to avoid it. I hide around, the, I line of sight him to get my health back up, and he goes down from Condies. So in this next fight, I want you to pay really close attention to how I'm using my signets, and how at first I seem to start using my combos, and then I start using them entirely defensively. So you'll see that I whiff my first combo pretty bad there, so I go straight into a burning combo. Right now it's just a 2v2, so and I'm not feeling any pressure, so I decide to start using my signets offensively. You'll see me use my fire signet here in a second. Um, but the fight is going to escalate into a 3v2, and then a 3v3 shortly after that. Um, but they're going to start focusing me. You'll see the thief come out of stealth here, but fortunately we're going to get one of these guys down, which is going to take the pressure off for a second and allow me to get one more combo. But a fourth uh, opponent arrives, you don't see him because he's a, an elementalist, a glass elementalist. You see that giant meteor shower coming down, he's sitting up on top. So right now it's a 4v3 with me as the opposing team's primary target. Um, so all I'm going to do here is just cycle through my signets as quickly as I can, but without wasting them in, in, at... Uh, poor opportunities. So like for example you see them, they're chasing me around, I'm just gonna try to keep up my sustain, I use the magnetic wave to keep the condies clear off of me, and I use my uh, my timed signets as, as they come up. But that is the weakness. When you look at it, it's you, you really only have certain amounts of protection and you have to time them to certain attacks. So if you're getting attacked by multiple people all at once, it's hard to place your protection right where it needs to be except to keep it up at all times. You're better off just diving into the fight, using your signets to protect yourself, and when you run out, you back out like I am now to get them back up and then go back in. But at this point, the fight is over. I believe it ended with a 4v4 with us on top, so we'll just segue over to the next fight. So I don't want to focus too much on the Thief here. He's going to be attacking me pretty darn aggressively to keep me from capping the point, which is going to kill him. Um, what I wanted to talk about was our ability to stomp people. Um, we have an incredible amount of abilities that blind and uh, knock back and daze and stun that we can really turn a fight just by the people who are downed. Um, if you can make it that far to the end of the fight, and now that you've watched this tutorial, I know you can, like here, for example, I put up my invulnerability to get the stomp, but of course he blinks away. Before he has a chance to do anything, I use my Signet of Air to blind both of them to keep them from knocking me over to get the stomp. You'll see it again here. This warrior is really bad, so I'm just going to really quickly blow past it here. But it's the same thing. Like, the Signet of Air comes up every 20 seconds. My Blind in Air comes up every 10 seconds. I have a, uh, an Invuln that comes up every 60 seconds. I have a Daze in uh, Ice that can knock people down from their own stomps. Like, the stomping is just unreal. I'll show you here again. Uh, we're going to get into another team fight. And I'll get to show you my favorite reason why I love to play this build. So in this case, we're going after this necromancer. He's he's just running at this point because there's two on one. Uh, we managed to get him down at the top of the stairs here, but it's such an unfortunate location because once he goes down, we get knocked off this edge twice. Uh, so we go, but we try to run back up to pick him back up, but they've got another the the ranger's already on top of him, rezzing him, and then an engineer comes to join the fight. So it's now right now a two v three. They knock me back off, and I run to the center point just to hold on to it for my team, hoping that somebody's going to come and back me up. But I used up too many of my I used up my stunbreaker already. I, I tried to get it here to avoid that big bomb. I managed to evade the most of it, but uh, he still gets the hit, and I'm out of the circle. So he gets the full 
he gets the full decap, uh, but now right now it's 2v1. The Necromats are still up top, still thinking about coming and joining in. The Ranger appears first, starts barraging from a distance, so now it's 2v2. I'm going to go around, and I, I think I'm primary right now, so I'm trying to avoid damage, but I notice my teammate's taking more than I am, so I jump back into the fight. We we get this this engineer down. I put in, up an invuln, but the invuln doesn't last quite long enough, so I blind him as well, just to make sure that I get the stomp, which is really important because it rallies the ranger. Uh, Right now we're at a 2v2, but the ranger's really badly damaged, so I'm going to run in there and try to take soak up some of that damage since I'm full. So the ranger goes down, but fortunately we have a teammate come to assist. We managed to get the necro down at the same time, so it really comes down to the stomp. I blind out his fear, and then get the stomp. It's just, you, you start, once you get the ball rolling, it just never seems to stop. Like, again, here, we're going to knock this guy down, we're going to use a combo 1, this ranger's going to die almost immediately. Stomp. No problem. We've got all of these cooldowns that allow us to blow, to just blow through these, these players once they hit the ground. Of course, that's not going to happen all the time, but when it does happen, trust me, you'll fall in love with this build just as I have. Having the ability to stomp like a thief is just incredible. And that's really the truth. You, you can stomp like a thief, but in my opinion, a little bit better. So in this case, we're going to fight a 2v, a 2v3. Me and, me and one other guy are going to fight these guys, but he's a, a bunker staff Ellie, so he's not particularly contributing. Uh, but this warrior is already pretty low, so we managed to get him down, and I managed to finish it off in Earth so I can do a mist form stomp. When the other two see that happen, and our third player arrives, this elementalist, the rest of them decide to bug out. Um, but because I've got this 20 second immobilize and a, and a stun, I can just keep on him. I can, I can hunt him down, I can kill him, no problem. Just like a thief. Once he's down, he's dead. There's nothing else that can happen. I, I, I have a blind, and away he goes. So, there you go. That's it. That's it for the team fights. Hello and welcome to the build portion of the tutorial video. Uh, every build, I think, needs at least three things. You'll need a stun breaker, you'll need condi clear, and you'll need protection. We get our protection pretty simply. We get it from fire's embrace with elemental shielding. Uh, if you're not sure how that works, just read the tooltips and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Uh, that means that all of your signets will give you protection as well as the fire shield. So, our, we got our Condi clear from Earth, we get uh, Magnetic Wave, this is why this build works with Scepter Focus and not Scepter Dagger. We have no other way to clear Condis in your utilities, it has to come from this. This is the best defensive ability in the game, as far as I'm concerned. It damages foes, it cures three of your conditions, and reflects projectiles, it also causes cripple, and it's also a blast finisher, but to top it all off, it's only 25 seconds uh, cooldown. This thing you can use all the time. It's just incredible. It's what makes the build work. Uh, this is also used for clearing condies because in the con in today's condi meta you really need as much as you can get and this is also really good because you can choose it it's like if you get immobilized and they didn't cover it up with anything you just switch into water and you're good to go this is a great ability i talked about it at length in other tutorials so i won't talk about it here uh, soothing mist stacks with uh, signet of restoration really really strong uh, just helps you sustain amazingly uh, this again, vulnerability. It helps. This this really ties into the whole build. the The reason why I wanted to add vulnerability onto each and every one of my signets, or all of my damaging signets anyway, is because I want to cover them up with condies. I have three condies that I really need to keep onto my opponents. I need burning, I need bleeding, and I need uh, poison. I need those to stay up all the time. And when it, when they clean their condies, I need to make sure that they're just cleaning off useless ones like this. So that's what really helps. But you don't need this. You can use soothing wave if you really if you just don't believe it. Especially since we do apply vulnerability with shatterstone, uh, so it's it's not a big deal. Uh, but I do like it. So uh, going back into it, the three condies that we really need to talk about the the burning. This is really important. Uh, this is a great ability, this burning precision, because it causes burning outside of fire. The only way to cause burning is when you're in fire, the only direct way anyway, is this flame strike. Uh, it causes three seconds, it's really good, but if I'm not attuned to fire, they're not being burned, so it's not great. This is a great way to get it started, only. Uh, once with this, uh, it ties really well in with uh, Signet of Fire, because this causes more critical chance, which causes you to crit more, which causes them to burn more. Uh, so it works really well in conjunction. Uh, the reason why burning is the most important out of all the abilities is because of this rune. It's Flame Legion. It causes 7% more damage against burning foes, so you want to keep them burning all the time. It also increases burning duration by 30%, so this burning is going to be sitting on them a long, long time. Um, that's the idea anyway. So how do we protect it? We protect it by adding as many condies as we can. Vulnerability being one of them. 
and this one, the new the new sigil. Uh, sigil of torment is is great for applying torment, and it every five seconds you'll they'll have to clean it because it's it it's a fifty percent chance on critical, and you critical quite a bit, uh, especially with this the signet of fire. So adding torment occasionally it will it'll add more damage, but also it's something that they'll have to clean, and it'll hide the. Uh, burns. The second most important one is most definitely bleed. Bleed is really great because of this one spammable attack. Stone shards causes three burning. It's also a physical projectile. Uh, it's really good for just stacking on the bleeds. If you can, just stay in earth. Uh, just a pile on the conditions, try to end your combos in earth, and just spam the crap out of this. Because you'll stack on tons of bleeding, it'll kill them really fast, and if you can cover it up effectively, it's just It'll it'll kill them by itself. Um, okay, so that's basically the whole build. Uh, everything you need to know, you can just basically poke around. The only thing I would other mention, otherwise mention, is uh, this is another way to go. You can put that in and get blinding ashes, or you can take that out and put in persisting flames. This is better for like uh, team fights if you want to provide fury to your team. But this is the real thing. It adds ten percent damage to burning foes, and as I said, you're causing burning a lot. So the uh, the blinding ashes will also be useful. Um, I forgot to mention the uh, the flame shields. Every time you use one of these, you get a flame shield. Flame shields cause burning when they hit you. You cause burning when you cause crits. You cause burning when you're tuned to fire and they hit you. Uh, you cause burning every 25% every time they hit you. Like, you are getting tons of burning, but you've got to be able to stack it on. And then once it's on, you have to be able to protect it. Just keep piling on those conditions and then keep going. All right. So that's the end of this tutorial video. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, I, I'll, again, it's the only way that I can tell that, I, that people like this and, and that I'm getting any traction at all. So yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks. My name is Azili.